it's it's been three years in the making. Mm-hmm. How much of a relief is it to finally have Fable Two ready for public consumption? I mean, it's an enormous relief to have you know something that you've been passionate about for three years. It, it it's also very scary. You know, some I've got mixed emotions about this. Sometimes I want to take fable and lock it in a cupboard and say no you can never have a look at it just because you know it's been so long but I'm in fable fable 2 de- I'm desperate to open the doors and show people what it's got because never before have I worked on the game that we actually have not really talked about all the features you have no idea how the things that I have talked about so far and I've talked about you know, the drama and the story, and I've talked about game mechanics like the combat system on one button and the dog, and you have no idea how we've blended that together. And mm. and what I hope, and God, you're going to be the one someone that's reviewing this game soon, but what I hope is when you play Fable, you're playing something like nothing you've experienced before. If I, I think, I think we're, that's what we're going to achieve. I mean, there is an awful lot of role-playing type games mm. out there. Yeah. Do you think it's that that's, set, that's going to set Fable 2 apart? I think it's a. I think it's. I mean, I think it's the uniqueness of our world. I think it's the sheer size of and the number of things that you can do an experiment with. I think it is the drama of the story. I mean, the story is really good. And we, you got to remember, before we were just programmers making up the story. That's the honest truth in Fable 1. This time, we've had. Actors in a, a soundstage that are used on James Bond acting out the entirety of Fable and watching them improvise and then changing the story around that, that means that the story is going to be a real emotional roller coaster ride. And on top of that, you've got some new things that you've never seen in the game before the dog you've never seen in the game before, the way you navigate around the world you've never seen in the game before. The freedom to be who you really are is totally unique in Fable 2. The world of Albion in Fable 2 is obviously built as a dynamic one where you can directly influence the course of the game and the world surrounding you mm. sort of irreversibly. Um, isn't that a bit scary? You know, can a gamer actually ruin the game by, by making the wrong decisions, as it were? Well, that, that, that's interesting. If you start worrying too much about, oh, I want to be truly good or truly evil, and you start obsessing about that too much, then I think it would be worrying. But I, th- I think what you'll find is, firstly, there's a subtlety to what, it, what is good and evil. That we're measuring much more than good and evil now. We're measuring how cruel or kind you are. We're measuring how cruel, how cr- um, uh, pure or corrupt you are, how greedy or how generous you are. And all of these, you kind of then start to forget about, you know, oh, this is, if I do this, this will happen, or this, this will happen. You just be yourself. And so I think we've probably succeeded far better than we succeeded in Fable 1. Then. Now, we've seen a lot of games um, being made into films, mm. which I'm not sure you, you like or love. Mm. But are there any of your past games you could see making it successfully to the big screen? Um... I, 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 I can't think of many, if any, examples of films that have really done the games any good, to be honest with you. Absolutely. Um, I, I'd, I'd like to think there was a game that I've worked on which could inspire a film, and maybe the closest one probably would be a game called Syndicate that I worked sure. on a long time ago. Mm-hmm. And I think the world and the ethos behind Syndicate was, would still make an interesting film, but... It's a dangerous game, you know. They, they, I'm sure there will be somebody that asks us about, you know, is, you know, could we make Fable into a film? And I, I would be very nervous about that because it, you know, you're asking, you're giving your dream to another dreamer, mm-hmm. and how they reinvent your dream it would be too, immensely scary. Um, would you ever revisit any of? I mean, we've seen it here with Fable, mm. but. Would you ever consider making a new version of Syndicate for the new mm. consoles or perhaps Populous? Mm. I mean, I'd, I'd love to do that. I, I certainly have a very clear idea what I would do with Populous and what I would do with Syndicate. I, the, but unfortunately, the rights are held by Electronic Arts. And um, 
unless I sneak into their vaults and steal those rights back, I, I, you know, I don't think there's a chance of making a sure. version of Syndicate or Populist. Um, given the games that you've been responsible for, mm -hmm. what do you think will be your legacy to the games industry? Um, God, that's a very difficult question, isn't it? I guess what I want my legacy perhaps to be is someone who at least tried or at least pushed forward. And, you know, I know I say I want to make the greatest game and the greatest film, the greatest story and whatever, but at least if you try and make something different, if you try and invent something that hasn't existed before, it's worth trying. Because without that invention and that creativity and that push, I think it's so easy for us to stagnate in somewhere which is, you know, like the same old thing, only slightly more polished. So I think, if anything, my legacy would be being ridiculously ambitious.